Hey everyone, it's Jeff from Programmer vs. World, and today we are going to show you how to bind multiple references in OSGI using a Maven project. Yeah, I know that was a mouthful, but we're going to do it, and here's how we're going to do it. So to get started, what we're really going to have to set up first is a multiple module Maven project. Now these can be a nightmare, but we're going to keep ours relatively simple, and we're going to use the quick start each time we create a step. So with a blank Eclipse open in a blank workspace, go up to File, New, Other. Go into Maven and say Maven Project. And once we're inside there, we'll leave a lot of this the default. We're gonna use the default workstation and we're gonna choose our archetype to be the Maven Quick Start archetype right here, this guy. Hit the next button. We've got to give this a name. You can give it whatever namespace you want. I'm going to stick with the code aficionado training namespace, and we'll just call this the multiple cardinality project. And I'll hit finish on it. So what we're going to use this for is we're going to use this as the parent project of all the sub projects that we're going to do. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna to have to work with our top level project a little. Right now, it's set up to be a just a jar file project, a normal Maven project, and we don't necessarily need that. So we're gonna go ahead and change our packaging type here to Palm, and go ahead and save that away. We're gonna get this little error here indicating that we need to update our Maven project, but before we do that, let's go ahead and can I get to these through here? I sure can. Let's go ahead and delete the source and the test directory because we're not going to need it. And it's just going to get in the way if we don't. Uh, we'll leave the target directory, but we're really not going to use it either. This is pretty much what this build is going to look like now. We notice this is a top level palm. It's not actually building anything. It doesn't have any plugins established. This is just going to be our top level folder. Now, if we come in here and we right click and we go down to Maven and say update project, we're gonna have to do this a lot. So learn where this is and say, okay, the project itself will convert itself back to being now a top level Palm project. Here we can pretty much build as many bundles as we want and have them all build by us just simply building the top level of the project. So let's start with our API bundle. That'll be the easiest place to start because an API project is nothing more than an interface and a couple extra little things in the manifest. So we'll right click the multiple cardinality project and say on the Maven menu, say new Maven module project. And inside here for a module name, we'll call this our greeter API. Quick check to make everything looks okay. It does. We're going to make this a quick start as well. And we'll leave the namespace intact. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the org off of that. And there we go. So we'll notice that the Greeter API is inside our top level Palm project now, but it, Eclipse also put it out here on the root for us. It just did this as an extra helpy helperton function to allow us quick access to it so that we can get access to the source folders if we access it from inside here it's going to look like this and it really doesn't want us editing in there so every sub project of a master palm that you create will have its own top level representation here in your package explorer um, after a while it's going to become confusing as to which one's the main project that you're going to build that's kind of why we named this with the the last word being project but your mileage varies and you'll know what happened notice what happens on the inside of the palm rather is that it adds a new modules element and actually put that specific sub project in there as a module and that's really all that hard work that we just did actually accomplished but let's get started customizing our greeter api the first thing i want to do is i want to take this test uh, directory out of here we won't be testing an interface and we'll go ahead and delete this namespace out of here too because I want to put my own in. Now you can put whatever you like in here. I'm going to use the website's address backwards in typical Java fashion. And oh yeah, that's a little bit too 
explicitly there. And I'm gonna go ahead and create an API namespace inside the sub namespace of training. And in here, we'll just add our greeter interface. Oops. So in our greeter interface that we did in previous tutorials, all we really did was uh, we returned a string back. I don't know why I needed to put the word public in there. But all we did was return a greeting from the actual greeter and that's the only functionality it really had. It's sort of the hello world of the OSGI community. So we'll let this be and we'll hit save on that. Now in order to, this is really all we really need to do in order to have the API project built and be able to put it in some kind of working order so we can deploy it. But we're gonna need to add some some plugins and some dependencies as we always do in Maven in order to make this work. So let's take a look at what we're gonna need next. First real thing we're gonna need is the Maven bundle plugin. Otherwise, this will just be a moot point to try to do a tutorial. The Maven bundle pro uh, plugin, the Maven bundle, why is it a tongue twister? The Maven bundle plugin <laughs> will actually allow us to build the manifest needed to represent the bundle. So instead of building a regular jar manifest, this plugin will actually help us uh, build the uh, OSGI manifest header that we actually need. Uh, we see we got a couple errors here and that's because these fields, both group ID and that version weren't really needed. They're being, control or they're being controlled by the master palm. That actually wasn't the version though, was it? Yeah, it was. So the version number and the group ID are being controlled by the master palm, which is fine in our case. The only thing we need to do now is we need to go in and right above properties, we need to add our build directory and add our plugins. And this is not a Windows machine, so hitting that did not cause what I wanted to happen. There we go. And we'll paste in our plugin that we already had on the clipboard. Now this is the Maven bundle plugin. You may have to pause it here and copy this in if you want. Version 237 with extensions set to true. Um, we're actually going to export our namespace and we're going to leave these two variables, actually variables of the, the POM for the project name and et cetera. And I'm just going to highlight all of that real fast and say source format. There we go. And we'll save that. And we're good to go with bundle number one. You know what? This is, this is good enough for the API bundle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn around and give this a good name so that when we see it inside Apache Felix, we will be able to, def to figure out what it is. So we'll say well, this is the greeter tutor whoops, tutorial API. And one quick check of the palm, make sure everything else looks good. This dependency on gene units probably not gonna be used. We can go ahead and remove that. Go ahead and hit save on it. And that's about as simple as a bundle can get. So I'm gonna build this project using Maven install. I'm not gonna do it at the top level of the pond just yet. I just want it to grab all the dependencies and then put something in the target so I can show you how to double check this. And this is taking a lot longer than I suspected. There we go. So now if we go into our target directory, we should see our bundle here. If we go inside using the bundle viewer, I can see right away that this is not in fact an OSGI bundle. And that in fact was a dog bark. So this is not an OSGI bundle, which means something's not configured correctly. So if I go back into the palm and look, we spent all this work of snapping this plugin in and I forgot to show you the real trick to make all this work. We need to set the packaging flag to bundle. When we do that, we'll probably set off an alarm here saying that we need to update our project again, which is a good thing because now it's a completely different type of build. And now that that's there, we should be able to go back in here, run the install again. This one shouldn't take as long. Now, if we go in here, we'll see that we actually have the symbolic name and the manifest version and the name and the version, which are all good indicators that yes, this is a bundle that's ready to go. What I'm not seeing here is the fact that we should be exporting our API package. Now this happens for a number of different reasons. The most common is an error or a typo in the actual namespace. So let's go right up here to the top and copy that. I'm not seeing it right offhand. 
Ah, the word greeter wasn't in it, so there we go. Now we'll go ahead and, uh, I almost said paste this. We're gonna go ahead and install this one more time, and this time I promise you it'll be correct, because we have pasted the namespace exactly into the export package, and now we'll see that that package is indeed exported inside the bundle. You remember in a previous tutorial, we set up Apache Felix, uh, basically bare bones with just a web console. If, if you're still confused on how to do that, um, there is a video on in the same channel that shows you how to do all this. Uh, it's absolutely really quickly. Uh, it's a real qu really quickly. It's a real quick tutorial, and it's going to help you in the long run be able to set the container up really fast with just a web console, which will help you in development. Now, the only difference here, let's go to our web console. And I won't show you the cheat that I'm pasting from. By the way, there is a GitHub project in GitHub that has all of the source code in it, which is exactly what I'm pasting from now. So that way they'll jive together later. And I will put that link in the video, I promise. So the only reason this web console differs from the ones that we created earlier is the fact that now we have declarative services and meta type services also installed. Both of these guys could be grabbed right off the download section. Uh, for instance, here's the declarative services jar file and uh, what was the other one meta type? It's sitting right here. So these are the only two extra dependencies we need to have in place. Basically meta type is used for con configuration in case your bundles could define properties that we can configure later using this web interface, which is something I will show you in a future video. And all the declarative services uh, bundle you see right here does is it allows it to understand the component.xml file. Now we did one of these in a previous tutorial by hand. The SCR annotations that we're about to use in this project, all it does is help you help automate that and generates it for you. So those two files have to be here in order for this to work. So now that we've taken a look at our container and everything looks to be okay, let's go ahead and install that bundle. Now, where we're gonna find it is, in my case, it's in a tutorials directory. So here's the top level of that POM project. So this is our master project, and inside here is our individual sub our module, submodule, whatever, module project. And inside here's the target. If we go in here and we just grab this bundle and we say install and refresh, we'll see that right here it's installed and it's active and it exports the correct API namespace and everything's looking good so far. So you'll notice that we gave it a really nice name here. That name that we actually gave it in the POM is the name that shows up there. So whenever you, in the name field of your POM, especially your, well, you don't even have to do it there really. You can do it right here in the overview if you want, right here in the name field. Try to give it a name that makes it easy to find inside the web interface of Apache Felix and you'll really save yourself some work later. All right, so we have an API project now. Now we actually need to implement it and create a couple implementations and our original command console for the GoGo -Go shell so that we can test some things. So we'll go in next and create another submodule project and we'll start from there. Okay, so let's go back to Eclipse and go back to our master project right here. I like to close these tabs to keep them from getting confused. Like when you have like five palms open, it's easy to get all confused as to what you actually have open. So we'll go back to our multiple cardinality project, right click it, say Maven, and we'll create another Maven module project. And in this type, we'll call this simple greeter. Let's just call it simple greeter. And it's gonna be a quick start as well. Uh, it's going to be in the same namespace, and we'll just call it simple.greeter. That translates to simple-greeter, the dots, dashes. It's just one of the idiosyncrasies of working with it. So you notice it put it at the top level as well. But if we open up the master, it's actually inside of here, which is right where it's supposed to be. And in the palm.xml, again, if we come down here, we'll see there's a module section, and our new module was added. And this is just kind of the rinse repeat of creating a multiple bundle Maven project. So in our simple greeter project, we have the same original problem that we had before. We basically need to modify the POM so that it will also build. Now we can cheat here, since we've already done it once. We can go inside our greeter API, find that POM, and take everything in between from build to build here and copy it. And go to our other page here. And right underneath the URL, so that it don't mess this up, we'll put it right there. And remember this time as well, I like to put it right above build so that I always know where it is. We'll put the packaging line. 
And you might ask, why am I writing this line in here by hand instead of using the editors? And that's a fair enough question. So let's go over here back to the original overview and we'll find the packaging pull down. If you hit it, you'll notice the word bundle is nowhere in that list. So it's absolutely a must that you put these packaging lines in manually. The interesting part is once you put them in, they will show up in the pull down from that point forward, but only for this project. Once again, we remove the, uh, basically the group ID and everything in the version, which is being controlled by the master pump. We just hit the save button. Now here it's a little bit different. We don't want to export that package. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out. And we're gonna put a real quick line in here, which is actually a cheat that a lot of OSGI purists will yell at you over. But for right now, just put import package all. What that'll do is when that bundle's deployed, every dependency that it has will just be immediately wildcard resolved instead of you specifying exactly what it is that this requires. Now we'll, we can fix this later. It's really easy. We'll just have to put our API in for this specific one. But just to keep the tutorial moving along, I'm gonna wildcard those to all. Now we're actually not done here. We need to also add a plugin that'll help convert our SCR annotations into the actual component.xml file because this is actually gonna be an implementation project. So let me go get that and paste that in for you. So now that I've gone to my secret stashy place and actually grabbed the snippet that I'm about to paste on the screen, don't worry, it's the GitHub project and it'll be at the bottom of the video. We need to snap in the Maven compiler plugin and this is just so our project will actually build. You'll have a lot of fun if you don't actually put this line in here of troubleshooting for an hour of why you seem to get these weird build errors and it just says it can't build your project. It's because it doesn't have the compiler snapped in. So that should be enough for us to actually build. Now, we need the SCR annotations though. And we're gonna end up building three implementations here. And if I snap those plugins into all three implementations, I'll have to maintain the versions in three different places. So I'm thinking, why don't we just do it in the master palm and that way all the child palms will actually inherit that plugin. So let me sneak off to my hidey hole again and I'm gonna go get that clipboard thing and I'm gonna show you where we're gonna put that. Ah, oh, whatever, to hell with hiding, I'll just show you. So I'll go to my GitHub project right here and this is the same lab that we're working on right now. I'm just doing it from scratch and live, which is dangerous all at the same time. And you notice in the top level palm, we actually have a plugin for the SCR plugin. We have a plugin for the SCR plugin. That's great grammar, isn't it? So we have a plugin here that allows us to translate the SCR annotations that we're gonna put on our classes into the component.xml file that it actually generates. So let's copy that line and go over to our master palm. And we are missing the build section of the master palm. We're also missing the plugin section. Let's go ahead and add that now and we'll just paste that line in. Highlight everything, source, refactor. One day you would think I would remember that shortcut, but like typical Mac shortcuts, it has the command key in it and I get annoyed by it. So all of our child palms will now get this plugin. It won't just be the parent. And we are almost good to go. If you'll notice, we changed our packaging type to bundle a moment ago, and now our project's out of sync. So we have to right click our project here, say Maven, update project, okay, and pow, there it goes. So now that we have two pro we actually have to change our API too. I wonder why it's angry. It's just not up to date. I don't know why that happened. Oh, it's because we put the Maven SCR plugin in the master palm. Okay, so I probably should have mentioned that. Anytime you change the master palm, especially with a plugin, it's gonna cause all of the projects underneath it to go out of whack. Now, the good news is you can click on the master project and refresh all of these at one time. Since I'm a glutton for punishment and don't like to do things the efficient way, I'm gonna go ahead and do them one at a time just to make this video go longer than it was supposed to. Okay, so now that that's in there, we can now build both these projects just by right clicking the master project and installing it. Or at least we can create very, we can create a plethora of build errors this way too. So we've noticed now in the summary, uh, we'll see that the simple greeter built and the greeter tutorial built. And right away I can tell you, let's go ahead and change that name before I even deploy that. Let's change this to simple greeter implementation 
and I have a habit of spelling things wrong in those blocks all the time. Go over to the palm, make sure there's no squiggles underneath it. That's the way I do my spell check. And then we will right click that, say run as Maven install again. Now we see that our greeter tutorial built and our greeter implementation built, and they're both good to go. Let's take a look in the target directory and make sure that we have a manifest. We do, it's exporting nothing. There's no imports yet because we haven't told it anything specific. Okay. Now what we need to do is come in here and I am going to pull that namespace out. I do this every single time. You would think I would have created an archetype for myself already, but I haven't because I'm lazy. And then I say new package and we'll say com code aficionado which i know is not aficionado for those of you that want to tell me that training um let's put a let's put implementation in there finish and then inside here we're going to create a new class and we're just going to call it simple Greeter. Now we got to do some work to this thing, of course, but before we can do that, we need to add our other project in as a dependency on this project, which means we need to change the palm real fast. So if you go into the palm.xml, go into the dependency section. So let's put it in my hand. I'm going to go to dependency, group ID. That's the problem with doing this stuff live. Perfection out of our training. And I just use IntelliSense and cheat. That's the lazy way. I'm going to take our greeter API, put it in there. Um, if you want to know what I'm hitting, by the way, it's control space, even on a Mac. And if you want to know how I get that annoying pop-up to come up, that's command space. <laughs> you probably don't want to know that one. All right, so now that we got that in there, we actually will, we don't need to do anything else now to have this reference available to us in the project. So this thing will go out, find that dependency, and load it in Maven and have it ready for us in our Maven library. So. On our simple greeter, we now should be able to say something really cool like, hey, this implements greeter. And it goes, hey, wait a minute. I don't know what that greeter is. So we say, well, it's this one. And it says, well, hey, you didn't implement this interface. So we'll say, hey, there, now we did. All right, so now we're good. So now we can just finish the implementation. Here we'll just say, hello world from a simple implementation. And that's all we really had to do to implement the greeter. Now is the fun part. We're going to use the SCR annotations to decorate our project. Now, you're not going to find much things that are different from them in BND. As long as you know what you're trying to do, give or take a few annotations, they're all really done approximately the same way. And B and D, to, well, you know what? Before we can even do that, well, we put the annotations in the project. So we should be able to type the word component. That's some reason I haven't enabled intelligent completion yet. And we don't have them. Okay, so let's go get them. If we go back to our master project, we'll notice we had a dependency on the inside of these for the org Apache Felix SCR annotations. We're going to need to put that in our parent master palm and the reason for that is just to pass it down to everything even the api module it's not going to hurt it to have it in there now if we go back to our simple greeter and we start typing the word component a wing and a prayer if we spell it right now we'll actually get it installed for us and you'll see that it actually put in the appropriate line up here now just because we put component in and let's call this a simple greeter component. That's just overly redundant, but we, at least we gave it a name. Even though we put this in, unlike BND tools, this doesn't mean it's going to automatically now host a service for us on the interface greeter. SCR annotations, these are treated as two different things. Just because you made it a component just means it was declared an XML file and it's now available to be used by other things in the same class path space. Well, not regular class path space, OSGI contextual class path path space. In order to make it a service, we have to change this. Or we don't really have to change it. We have to add another annotation. So let's go ahead and do that now. And that annotation is service. And inside service, there is a value. And that value just means it's the name of the interface that we're going to host that specific service under. 
And that's really all there is to it. So now we should be able to deploy this guy again, but only after I build it. So let's go ahead and run that as a Maven install. Should have no problems, which we didn't. And if we go in here and install that bad boy now, and make it go active, we'll notice that service is absolutely being hosted. We'll also notice that there is a component.xml file that was built for us. When you say, well, that's interesting. Let's go look at that. If we come in here to our simple greeting and we go into OSGIINF, we'll notice that something, let me close all these, something has actually built our component XL, uh, XML <laughs> file for us. And that thing was the SCR plugin that we snapped into the master palm. That guy read our annotations, figured out what we were trying to say, and wrote this file for us. And that's essentially how they work. So that being said, we now have a component, or at least a single component launched in here. What we need to do now is recreate our go-go shell command in another module and play with that a little bit. And then we'll create multiple greeters. We'll create two more and then we'll make that shell command talk to it. So that'd be an interesting part two, and it? let's get started on that. But before we start part two, let me tell you that right now I'm in post editing, and I didn't realize that this went 55 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out all the sections where we actually created the sub modules from this point forward. I'm gonna assume that we know how to do that. And we'll just pick right up with the classes from this point forward. Go. And then all we're really gonna do here is we're gonna create a new class, and we're gonna call it greeter command. Now we don't have to do anything special here, but we do know that we need to have a command called greet in here. And for right now, we'll, we'll just have it print hello, hello, <laughs> just to see if it's working when we actually get it deployed here. So in order to make this command work inside the bundle, <clears throat> first of all, we have to make it a component and we'll give it a name, we'll say greeter, go, go, shell, component. And then we have to give it the same service flag, except this time, I always forget the name of this tag, value, we'll just say object.class. This will just guaranteed, guarantee us it'll always get registered. Now, in order for this to actually be a GoGo -Go command, the actual uh, GoGo -Go whiteboard that listens for new commands to get registered needs a couple properties first. And here's where we're going to see a big difference between the way properties work in BND tools and properties work here. Believe it or not, I actually like SCR's way of doing it better. So the way they do it is they have a properties annotation, which is plural. And inside here, you put property annotations, which all they are are name and value pairs. And I think it's OSGI command scope is one of them. I'm guessing here. I'm going to go back and look at my cheat sheet here in a minute. And we'll call this tutorial. And then we had to add another command, which was just OSGI. Let's look at the cheat sheet real fast. We'll go back, go into our bundle, we'll go into the command we created earlier today. And it is OSGI command function. And this is actually the name of the method to execute inside here whenever the command's executed. And we'll put greet. And that's all there really is to creating that greeter command. Now we're gonna do some different stuff with it. Okay, let's space this out a little bit because I'm gonna have to add some stuff here in a minute. I just wanted to set this up to make sure that it was work. Make sure that it will work. Did I just say make sure that it is work? It's not work, it's fine. All right, so let's go inside the palm one last glance, it's still bundled. We did give it a name, everything looks good. That means that this is absolutely buildable. Let's go ahead and build it. We got an okay. We go into our target directory now. I wanna take a look and make sure we do have a com component XML. Our imports and exports are looking a little bit iffy here though but we are importing everything so it should bind okay. All right, so we're good to go. Now, the weird part of this is whenever you say export nothing, it's gonna leave the line out of the file. And that's the trick here. When you say import whatever wildcard, it doesn't know what to import so it can't put it in the manifest, but when you turn it on, it will actually import whatever it needs. As you can imagine, 
it's kind of being unfair to dependency management. So should we even try this? Let's let's try this live. I mean, this is there's no harm in it. We'll just say we definitely want this to import something. Code affectionado dot. Uh, what is our API's namespace? Training dot API. So now we'll explicitly define it just to make sure it's spelled right because I have a habit of messing these up during tutorials. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that in. Might as well show you the right way to do this. Yep, so it was correct. Now we'll go ahead and build that again because I wanted to generate a new bundle. And I'm going to go inside here. And now you'll notice that the import's actually there. And it's got this weird mechanism that just says, hey, anything that's greater than snapshot one. But the difference here is that when I deploy this module, it knows from the moment it deploys what it needs. It doesn't wait for someone to try to activate it before it figures it out. And that's that can be a life or death situation. So this is always the best practice if you know this ahead of time. But anyway, we have the greeter bundle. We have it set up and ready to go. Let's go ahead and install that bad boy. We'll say choose file. Uh, where is it? It's right here. Target this guy. Install. We'll see him now up here installed. If we expand him, we'll see nothing in red. We'll see that we're importing this and we actually got it from bundle number 18. So these are handy things to look at. I always expand these before I hit the, the play button on them just to see if anything's highlighted in red. If it is, what it's gonna tell you is it can't find it and it's gonna be hanging off of this area right here. It's gonna tell you it needs this namespace, but it can't find it anywhere. Here we can see that it needed API, a version greater than snapshot one, and it actually found it in bundle 18 and, bound, and is bound to it, which is a good thing. So now we can go active and we can see that we actually have a service. Yeah, I did have to toggle it onto, that's just a cheat. If you ever see some of this weird stuff that I'm doing a tutorial, just write a comment in a YouTube video and call me out on it because what it is is I have these habits from working with this over and over again and I'm forgetting to explain it as I go along. That's just a weird way of refreshing the uh, the actual bundle to see the services kick in. So now that we see that we have it, so that, that means we can probably go down to our terminal, list bundles, we'll see all of them in there. If I go a help, tutorial greets now in there. If I go tutorial greet, I get hello, which is exactly what we said we wanted. Okay, we're in a really good spot right now. So now all we have to do is bind to a service reference, right, and make a couple more of these. So let's go ahead and bond to the service reference next. We'll go back into our greeter command, and I want to show you how easy it is in SCR to bind to a, what's called a unitary reference, right? First of all, you just, cre you just create a field, right? I'm going to need to put that import in. And to make this work, all, this is all you have to do. That's it. Is just put the reference keyword in it. Had someone asked me the other day if this is an SCR annotation, and absolutely it is. Okay, it's in it's not just an SCR annotation, it's also its standalone BND annotation, it's also in Blueprint, it's in all these guys. So that reference annotation right there automatically knows and will inject an instance of that into that field level variable. So really all we have to do now is just say greet. Greet. Oh, that's stupid. Let's call this greeter just so I don't feel icky for doing that. All right, so. That's all we have to do. So let's go ahead and rebuild this and I'll show you how simple a single reference is. And this workflow can get monotonous guys. So when you're working this fast and you're making this amount of updates, there are ways to make this easier. And I'll show you one here in a second. So now the bundle's updated. I don't have to refresh to know that it is. I should just be able to type tutorial greet again. By the way, the up arrow does work on Windows machines. And now you get hello world from a simple implementation, right? So it bound itself to this guy right here, service ID 59, the simple greeter component. So it's bound. And that's all it really took to do it. Now, to bind to multiples, mm, yeah, it takes a little bit more work, but let's go ahead and do that next. You know, why not, right? Now the question is, do I really want you to watch all of this or do I want you to do it yourself? I tell you what, I'm not going to show you how I'm going to build the next two bundles because all it really is is a bunch of cut and copy paste work that you've already seen me do. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through all this stuff. 
bam, was it that fast? All right, so essentially all I did was I created two more projects uh, all underneath our multiple cardinality product. One product, multiple cardinality product? Where, am I even talking right now? All right, so multiple cardinality project, right? That's where I created it. I don't know what the product is, but I didn't put them there. So under the multiple cardinality project, we created a universe greeter. And this guy just says, hello universe from universe, universe greeter. Yeah, it's, I know it's creative, right? That's why I have a degree in visual arts. So I also created a new one called Monday. And Monday just says, meh. All right, that's pretty much all the Monday greeter should do, by the way. And I'm not changing this code. So that being said, now that there's three of them in there, and I'll show you that they're all actually up and they're all bound. So there's our Monday greeter implementation. It's service ID 63, universe is 62. Uh, our go-go command is there. And you have a simple greeter implementation is 59. So you would say, well, I wonder what our greeter is bound to. Actually, our go-go command is bound to. And uh, it's pretty, doesn't really tell us in here. If we look at the component though, it will, and I don't want to cheat yet. So. Let's go uh, tutorial, greet. So it's still bound to the same one, but there's three of them there. So, okay, so I want this one gogo -go command, right, to execute every greeter that it finds that matches the context that it's asking for. And for starters, we're gonna say, I want everything. So fair enough. The way we do that is we go into our greeter command and we're gonna to have to change this reference. But before we can do that, we're gonna to need to create a couple methods to help us. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and change it now. We're gonna to have to add a couple methods to help us load up a collection, basically. So we're gonna change our field level variable to a list, and I always do the wrong one there. Um, we're not gonna worry so much about that code right there just yet. And then we need to create two commands, one for what, the ha what, what happens every time we get a new binding and the other for what happens every time we ask, get a request to remove a binding. And we're gonna have to implement these methods, but it's easy enough. So we'll just call them really simply set greeter and we'll create another one called uh, unset greeter. I love that language. But if you stick to your guns on creating you know, verbiage that's always done the same way throughout all your bundles, this makes things a heck of a lot easier. And inside here, what we wanna do is we wanna say, if the greeter is null, then we want to create a new, let's, let's make it an array list. Uh -huh. And now that we have an array list and we know that there was one guaranteed to be there now, we'll just say greeter, you know what? Let's change this verbiage so that it makes more sense. We'll just say greeters uh, add that specific greeter right here. And we should be good to go. Okay, so, and down here we'll do the same thing. So what'll happen is every time we get one of these, we want to actually remove it. And we'll put this guy in like this. So what we've essentially done is we've created binding and unbinding methods for our reference. Now we can come in and actually make some really interesting attribute changes that aren't gonna make sense right away. But the, mo the, the biggest one right here is the cardinality one. We're gonna change our cardinality to be, we can say mandatory multiple or optional multiple. That means that uh, we're going to ask it to give us all references that match. Now, a mandatory multiple means there has to be multiples there or don't even bother binding. Optional multiple says even if there's one there, go ahead and bind it. So let's go ahead. By the way, the default is unary, right? So it's single. We just saw that because we had to put nothing in and we actually got our reference. So let's do optional multiple. We have to add a specific reference policy in here in order for this to work, which is dynamic. And that just means that we're going to get notified of events whenever new